the sights and sounds of high school football in West Central Ohio. We are high above Goodwin Field here at Allen East High School as we get ready for kickoff 2023, the high school football season, getting started right here on WOS. And good evening, everyone. Glad to have you along. Patrick Gambler, Darren Gilbert here with you as we get rolling. The defending NWC champ, Allen East, hosting the defending BVC champion, Macomb. Looking forward to a great matchup tonight as we get the first Friday night of the high school football season going. Taking a look at the keys to the game, and Darren, uh, the keys of – Work for both teams tonight. What are we looking at uh, for the game this evening? Yeah, opening up the season, we got two quality programs. It's you know both laid the foundation and and the records have proved it. You know over the past many many years. Um, first of all, you know both teams was hit with a lot of graduation this past season. So I thought number one, you know you need to lean on your returning letterman that leadership because you're going to be having different names on the back of those jerseys this year with those numbers and you know nothing better than to have your your returning letterman show the leadership keep everybody composed and under control and because a lot of these kids have not had the opportunity to play varsity football and if they have it's been very minimal because both teams again like we said have been been hit hard with graduation two uh stay with the coaches scouting report you know it's a 48 minute game uh, you know, school is not started. If it has, it's only in, you know, the first week. Just stay with, you know, the scouting report for that 48 minutes. And number three, you got to minimize the big play opportunities. And, you know, one thing's going to happen tonight. Both these teams are going to be very well coached. And they're going to be prepared. And they're going to hit you. And they're very athletic. So you got to minimize the big play. Allen East has always been known for that breakaway speed. We saw that last year in their great run that they had to the semifinals. And then McComb, you know, they've always been big and physical up front. So minimizing those big plays. And I think we're in for a heck of a first play or first game of the 2023 season. Those are your keys to the game. Looking forward to getting this one started. Both teams with a lot of questions to answer on both sides of the football. Also coming off tremendous seasons last year. We'll see how this one unfolds. When we come back, we will have the kickoff coming up between Macomb and Allen East right here on WOSN. We are back here at Goodwin Field. McComb, Allen East, just about ready to get started. We are just about a minute away from the kickoff to the 2023 season. As we bring you this contest, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, St. St. Mary's, the scoreboard sponsor for this evening. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Getting ready to go. Alan East will receive the football first. So, you know, looking at some of the changes over on the Mustangs, of course, a lot of uh, depth, a lot of production lost last year. Their top rusher, their top passer, most of their defense, their top receiver, all gone. Now, some of that was the same kid. <laughs> so yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of questions to answer we here. saw run in the spring <laughs> down at the state track meet and just put on a show is now playing the high to Northern. Yep, won a state title at the state track uh, tournament as Braylon Schultz brings the ball out to the 15-yard line. And that is where the Mustangs will start their 2023 campaign. Nice play there by number five, Braden Shoup on the stop for the Panthers. Yeah, so that was Ethan Young that brought that out. So this is our first look at the new quarterback for Allen East, Jackson Thompson, the 5'10", 180-pound sophomore running back last year on the team that has converted over to quarterback. So anxious to get that first snap out of the way, and it's a quick pass to get things going to Trey Hensley out at the 25-yard line. So just what you want to have your young quarterback do, a little pitch and catch, short yarded situation. Yep, little dink and dunk there, nice little pitch and catch brought down by Woodruff. Keep an eye on that front four, McComb. They got two all-leaguers there from last year returning. 61, Nick Bormuth, 6'4", 260. There's a handoff, little spin action there by Thompson as he takes it and he picks up a couple more on the direct snap. Out across the 27 yard line. Elijah Gibbs on the stop along with number 11. Aiden Ebright. And they will give them a first down. So that's a side rail first down as Alanis able to move the sticks. 
Yeah, if you're Allen East, you got to be pleased getting the sticks move, partner, just like you said. So as many positive plays you can string together at the beginning. I mean, you say that for every quarterback, but. When you're young and inexperienced like this young man, you know, get the confidence early. Looking, third, and pass intercepted. Shoop standing right there, picking it off, and the play made by the Macomb defense. Yeah, that's one of those where they fell back almost like into a zone situation, and he didn't didn't actually – he saw the receiver. He didn't see the defender. And turnover early for the Mustangs. So a turnover on Downs, and Macomb will take over with 10.58 remaining in the first quarter as we are just over a minute. And now we will see the Macomb Panthers, who also have – a number of questions to answer on offense. They have a new quarterback, Blake Wittenmeyer, under center. We'll tell you more about him here in just a second on first down. The handoff to Braxton Althauser. Bouncing it back and then pushing forward, making a couple of nice moves, and pushing the sort of pile forward as he gets out to the 21-yard line. Met and brought down by Lane Wilremuth, 5'9", junior for the Mustangs. So they'll give him a pickup of nine on that play. Nice start there for Mr. Aldhauser, returning first team player in the BDC for the McComb. This is Aldhauser again, finds a seam up the middle out to the 10 and pushing Hensley out to the five yard line. That'll be a side rail first down and that sets the Panthers up at first and goal. It went off that left side. Big hole there. So good blocking by the Panther front as they're not wasting any time getting back up to the line. First and goal, ball just outside the five yard line. This is gonna be Althauser again, pushing the pile forward and is gonna be down and around the, between the one and the two yard line it looks like. Look like Jack Hole with the stop there. Altauser, one of the returning players from the Panthers team that won the BVC last year, ran for 15 touchdowns, 681 yards, over 1,000 all-purpose yards last season. So he will be the guy that uh, they are leaning on here early on. And just like that, McComb takes four plays and takes it into the end zone on the short field as they take an early 6-0 lead. I believe that was number six. Wilson that Grubb. It, yeah, that was Wilson Grubb. And it looks like, as we noticed here early on, that Chase Woodruff has been the quarterback for McComb. He was uh, also a possibility when head coach Chris Algy. He's also kicking, and he knocks that one through. So 9.51 remaining in the first quarter, and McComb. Jumps on top of Allen East early. They lead seven to nothing. The side rail in Wapakoneta featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Our first down sponsor tonight. Open seven days a week on Auglay Street and online at the sideRailRestaurant.com. McComb taking advantage of an Allen East turnover, marching down the field 31 yards and capitalizing on the interception with a Wilson Grubb touchdown run and uh, you know, if you're Allen East, really the thing you don't want to have happen are turnovers in general, but especially turnovers deep in your own territory. Well, and to fall behind early, and if you're McComb, you got to love it. You're on the road, and you get an early touchdown. Here's a nice return out to the 31-yard line by Braylon Schultz, so a better starting field position for Allen East for this next drive. Brought down by Braxton Aldhauser for the Panthers. Nice return there by that young man, Mr. Schultz. So Allen East comes back out on offense, and we were talking about the holes being filled on offense. One guy who is back, Jack Hole, ran for almost 1,300 yards last season. Would have been that that would have been enough for a leading rusher on most teams. Jacob Hershberger, of course, the leader in that regard last year, and here is Hole again, and he is stopped for about a loss of one in the backfield. Nice job there, Mr. All Conference Nick. Bormuth on the stop. So that'll back up the Mustangs just a little bit. Second down and 11.
in motion and a sweep and Hensley gets it but has nowhere to go as he has stopped there in the backfield. You see number 12 in the backfield there for the Panthers just blows that play up. Yeah, and I was trying to find him on the roster. We don't appear to have him on the roster, but that was a heck of a play, shedding that block and making that tackle in the backfield. Said someone loves him, but we can't identify him up here. Well, It'll be number what, 12 for right now. Heck of a play. <laughs> Here's Thompson dropping back, third down along. He's going to wing it out in. That pass intercepted at the 46-yard line once again. That is number 11 coming up with that. Hayden Ebright for McComb. So Got some laundry on the field. May have a block in the back. I think the interception's going to stand. I do think you're right. So we'll see what the... Not a bad start for Mr. Ebright, huh? No, not in the least. So it'll be a blindside block against McComb. The interception will stand, and that's going to back McComb up into their own territory. So they're going to place the ball just shy of the 40-yard line. As Jackson gets the experience as a quarterback, that's one of those you want to overthrow it. If you're going to do anything, overthrow it so the defender cannot intercept it. Intercept it, excuse me, and he underthrew that a little bit and a great play there by the Panthers. That's Ebright's second interception as Altauser is stopped in the backfield for a loss as the Alanese defense now with a chance to show up Let's and see show shot out. that gap. I think that was Nick Zellman who was back there. Also, I think Brogan Paxton, or Paxson rather, also back there on the tackle. Paxson, one of the re returning stars of this defense from last season. Jacob Pink's also stepping up there, shooting that gap. Now here's Altalzer again. No, I'm sorry, that's number nine. Chase Woodruff, and Woodruff has a seam down the sideline. He goes, making guys miss. Nice cut inside, and eventually brought down at the 13-yard line. Good for a side rail first down. A big play for Chase Woodruff and the McComb Panthers. This one may be coming back. Uh, DJ right. there are flags all over there down the 44-yard line and just shy of the 50-yard line. And I th think we're going to see another blocking violation against McComb. We'll see what they end up with here. I'll tell you what a kick out block there by number 75, Caleb Robinette for McComb. So they're saying blindside block once again against McComb. So a second down and 11 is going to turn to second down and I don't see if they walk this off. 18. It's a big one, huh? Yeah. So that'll make it a second down and 18 coming up as they spot the ball at the 32-yard line. So penalties are probably going to be a feature of the games here this first weekend as coaches and players are trying to iron some things out and figure some stuff out. Second along, here is the keeper by Woodruff, and Woodruff is tackled at the 35. Hensley, along with others, in on the stop. Dalton Smith, that sound correct, or 50, 68, yep. Yep, Dalton Smith. Dalton Smith, nice play there by that young man. 6'2", senior gets the stop. Third down and 15 coming up for McComb. You know, with the expansion of playoffs, Patrick, it's put it's put the football programs in situations where they've had shortened preseasons now, and you mm -hmm. got you just gotta deal with it and play through it and make adjustments on the on the go. Here's a handoff to Altauser on third down, going past that right side, and they like a matchup they have over on that side. They found some space there as he is knocked out of bounds at the 35, 36 yard line, and I don't see any flags. That's going to be a side rail first down for the Panthers. Cut down by number seven, Carson Klum, at the boundary. Yeah, right now McCombs controlling the line of scrimmage. He got two first team all. Conference offensive lineman, Owen DeWeese, number uh, 52, along with Bormuth, number 61. First team on both sides of the football. So 
So a fresh set of sticks for the Panthers. We are past the halfway point of this first quarter. 7-0 McComb looking for more. Here's Woodruff. Direct snap gets out to the 31-yard line before he is brought down by a host of Mustangs. Appeared to be Jack Hole on the stop along with number 50, Lane Wildermuth for the Mustangs. Nice job with his patience right there, picking that seam and that hole there and trying to get as much as he could. Lane Wildermuth, the 5'9 junior, here and his name called quite a bit so far. He's making his presence felt in the middle. Yeah, he was a honorable mention pick last year. Northwest Conference. Woodruff the handoff to Altizer here on second down and five and wrapped up in the backfield and brought down as that is Carson Klum making the tackle for loss there. Big play by that young man stepping up, grabbing him by the ankles. Klum an honorable mention pick last year, two years ago, a second teamer as a defensive back. And also Klum, one of the experienced one of the most experienced wide receivers coming back for this Allen East team. Yeah, it was crazy. I looked at the numbers, 26 yards a catch last year. Yeah. So a timeout on the field with 423 remaining. We'll be back. Lee's Famous First to Pete Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's hosting and sponsoring our scoreboard this evening. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous First to Pete Chicken, where home style happens. Patrick, listen to this here. I I'm did listening. some digging on Macomb. Chris Algie's coming in his 25th year. He's got a 230 and 70 record, one state title. Since 1976, they've only had two head coaches. 13 straight trips to the playoffs. 26 overall. <laughs> Amazing. LCC got him last year in the playoffs. Third down and six as the handoff, as a new number gets involved in things. That's uh, that's number 12, who we uh, still have not identified yet. Wasn't on the McComb roster. In any case, he has stopped short. It'll be fourth down. Well, I've heard Coach Algie say numerous times that tradition doesn't grow old. I think I've heard him other times say tradition doesn't graduate. So, you know, the expectation is that no matter who's down on the jerseys, you think still got to perform. That. 47 years and they've had two coaches. Yeah. That's that's unprecedented and, and very, very uh, different in today's society for, some, for two coaches in 47 years. Fourth and five, Panthers going for it. Woodruff dropping back, looking long, looking across the field, and the pass complete for the touchdown just out of the outstretched hands of Trey Hensley, and that is number, number 12. 12 once again. We got, we got to figure out who that guy is. Yeah. I'm gonna text Coach Algie and say, "Hey, who's number 12? He didn't send. He didn't send who that was." Well, what a th well-thrown <laughs> ball, though. I mean, he got his, his feet set, spun it. Defensive back just couldn't get his fingertips on it. I think that was number 11, uh, Braylon Schultz back there, just could not get his fingertips on the football. So 13 nothing. The score now. So Brad Meeks is our mystery number 12. Okay. Brad Meeks makes the catch, and with that sword, it is 14 to nothing. McComb on top of Allen East. We'll be back. Welcome back. Lee's famous first to be chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's sponsoring the scoreboard tonight. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous first to be chicken or home style happens. Another nice drive by McComb. Had to get a touchdown on a fourth down conversion. Brad Meals. Stepping in and getting the uh, touchdown reception. He is a mystery no longer. It was number 26 on the roster. He's number 12 now. Rocking the number 12 jersey for the Panthers. And he is one of those guys who is coming off uh, mostly defensive effort. But he is. Uh, yeah, he's a second teamer defensively. The linebacker spot last year in the BBC. But you can see that he his ability as an athlete to get behind the secondary right there. Heck of a play. Nice catch indeed, and uh, Al Alan East will have their third opportunity. As uh, you know, it's the first it's the first game of the season, and everybody's ironing some things out. Well, get all the getting all the kinks worked out. Yeah, Coach <laughs> Billings knew coming in, he had to replace you know the quarterback in various positions. I mean, you go 12 and two last year, and you lose to the state champion Marion Local in the regional finals. Year before, you lose to Coldwater in the regional finals. He's built an established program here. 
Thompson with the keeper on first down, looking for that left side and coming in and lowering the boom there for McComb. That's Octavian Gonzalez. Sure did. Stepped right up there and met him with the helmet. So picked up two yards on the carry. Second down and eight as we come up on three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Here's another quick pass. That is to Hensley, complete across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Appears to be five and... Say Altizer was in on that, okay. along with uh, Braden Shoup, number there five. There you go. Yep. Thank you. Hey, you help me, I help you. That's how this works. It's all good. <laughs> We're going to get through it. Just thankfully the sun's not in our eyes. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, they tell you as a kid, don't stare at the sun. But oh you know, what if it's an occupational hazard, depending on what you're doing? <laughs> Third and five. Handoff looking for a hole and hole looking for a hole and not finding much of one. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Fourth down coming up for Allen East. Trying to see who blew that up. Was that Mr. Bormuth right there? Must have been number 61. It got in the backfield. Boy, that young man is strong. 6'4", 260. Yeah. Moves really, really well. Makes the linebackers' jobs a little bit easier when you got a couple big fellas up there that can run and attack. Without a doubt, Coach Algie said his he felt really good about his line play, and so far that has been the case. Woodruff fielding the punt, getting it down to the 47-yard line. So decent field position coming up for the Panthers as they start their next drive. Let's take a look on the replay. Who makes this stop here? Oh, Mr. Klum. Yep. Nice individual stop there by that young man. Klum with a nice wrap-up tackle. And now McComb will try to go three for three on drives ending up in the end zone. Had a pleasure this summer to coach him, along with Mr. Schultz and Mr. Young, the basketball coach's son, Gabe's son, and all three play with high motors and are great kids. Yep, absolutely. I know Coach Young is looking for big things out of those three, along with the other personnel he's got returning. First and 10 of the 47, pitch to Altizer. And Altizer going to work that right side again, see if he can get a little bit of space. He does about five yards before he is pushed out of bounds. As I think Hole was in on the stop there for Allen. It was, yeah, it was Hole and Hensley that just met him and laid the wood to him right here at the boundary. It's like Hensley held him and Hole hit him. Pardon the alliteration. Yeah. And that's what he does. I mean, he's he's just a high motor linebacker and a running back, mm -hmm. and here hits you, here filling those gaps, and if he gets the football, he's going to try to run over the top of you, bounce off of you. So officially a pickup of six, second down and four. Two backs, Altizer getting it and not going anywhere. The aforementioned hole, the first one in there on the pile to get the stop, Lane Wildermuth shortly yep. thereafter. Good call. Filled the hole, didn't he? I yes, mean, he, he was right there and met him. Yes, he did. It was a short gain, so it'll be a third down and three coming up for the Panthers. Let's see if they try to run in between the tackles or bounce it outside. I'm trying to get him to jump and almost mm -hmm. succeeded. Good job by the Mustangs staying disciplined. Now Altizer going to bounce it off to the left side. Has some space. Is going to get the side rail first down and then some. Eventually pushed out of bounds at around the 30-yard line by Trey Hensley. That is going to be a side rail first down for McComb. I think that's one he wanted to run in between the tackles. And with his athleticism, he bounced it outside. Jordan Scott did a really good job meeting that McComb lineman. At the line of scrimmage, forcing the outside run. Indeed he did, and McComb has had to use a number of those outside runs, but they've had success. Here is Woodruff again. He's looking outside and nowhere to go. Hensley, nice tackle in space. Stops him for a three-yard gain. Sure was, real nice play. Wilbermuth also on the stop. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this is the one where Alan East just has to pin their ears back and try to keep McComb off the scoreboard here and get a little momentum and get the football back as we get ready to close in on this end of the first quarter. 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and Woodruff with the keeper cutting up the middle on second down and is going to be close, about a yard short of the first down, and that will most likely be the final play of the quarter. Is I think that's Woodruff a little shaken up on the play. It is. So Dalton Smith there with the tackle. We'll see if, uh, if Woodruff comes back out for this upcoming third down play, but that is going to happen on the other side of the field. First quarter in the books. McComb with a 14-0 lead over Allen East. Quarter number two coming up when we come back. Welcome back to Goodwin Field as the side rail in Wapakoneta, our first down sponsor this evening featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks open seven days a week on Ugly Street and online at sidrailrestaurant.com. Second quarter ready to get started. Woodruff back in there, and the handoff going right back up the middle as Wilson Grubb takes it all the way to the house. 24 yards for a McComb touchdown, and what a way to start the second quarter. Yeah, I'm not even sure he got touched. What a great, great series of blocks, starting with the offensive line and then that gaping hole created there by Mr. Meals to let him go untouched for that touchdown. So McComb now three for three. You on think drives ending up with touchdowns. You think he's finding weapons? I think Oof. so. Hold is up, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. Oh, so six seconds gone by in the second quarter, and it's a 21-0 McComb lead over Allen East. The Mustangs get the ball when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. McComb putting seven more points on the board, and the Panthers with a 21-0 lead over Allen East on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Welcome in to Goodwin Field for kickoff 2023 as the first week of high school football. Onward here on WOSN. I'm Patrick Hamler, joined alongside Darren Gilbert and McComb having uh, no problems on offense. They they look pretty good here in the early going. Well, they're one in the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. One of the interesting matchup was going to be Owen DeWeese, the center for McComb against first team nose tackle Brogan Paxson for Allen East. But I think it's coming in all five spots right now. The Panthers are just dominate the line of scrimmage. So the kickoff as Braylon Schultz fields the kick and gets out to around the 30-yard line, and Allen East will get back on offense. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, Allen East, of course, having a lot of new pieces, parts, and trying to figure out where uh, where things go, where kids fit, is you really haven't had a lot of opportunities to really do an offensive drive and kind of see what uh, what the offense can do. We've had a couple of decent carries by uh, by Jack Hole, who's a re who's a returner and was going to do good for you this year. Uh, you just haven't gotten a lot to see from Jackson Thompson yet to really see, you know, what what he can do yet. No experience, you know, when you got to replace Cade from last year, who did it all for him. You know, the young man's going to get better. He's just got to maintain his confidence and can you continue to play within himself and not try to do too much. Thompson with the tuck and run and ends up losing about a yard on that play, second down coming up. And, you know, we talked about the line play as well, McComb having a great job on the line, and, you know, that's going to impact every single quarterback ever, no when matter how experienced they are. When you got two big fellas in that front four that are all leaguers coming at you in an inexperienced offensive line, it's going to pay dividends for the defense. Thompson's pass incomplete looking for, uh, I think that was intended for Trey Hensley. He was the guy who reached out for it. Braylon Schultz also nearby, tried to make the play on it. It'll be third down. Just continue to be patient with the young man and let him go through his growing pain, so to speak. Thompson will tuck and run again on third down and 
Not going to get anywhere with that. Back to the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be fourth down. And you see the the offense very similar to what they've run the last three years with Jacob Hershberger back there. It seems like that's the kind of offense they want to run with Jackson Thompson. And from what little bit we've seen, it looks like Thompson is capable of running that kind of offense, just just not getting the, the same kind of blocking, the same kind of breaks yet that, right. that, that Hershberger had last year. You know, and you're, you're not going to notice it because he didn't get many yards right there. But he put his shoulder down into the defender, which is a good thing to see. He didn't back down from that challenge. Thompson with a nice punt out to the 39-yard line, brought back to the 44-yard line for McComb. So the Panthers uh, once again having pretty decent field position to start their next drive. And you know whether they've had really good field position or just okay field position, it hasn't mattered. They have scored on every drive they've had so far. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the halftime numbers just to see the yards accumulated, you know, with their offensive sets, and obviously the defense has done it, you know, for them giving, you know, Allen East the three and out situation, so to speak. A tackle right there was by Levi Nichols for the Mustangs on that return. So ball on the 44, and still trying to get some Panthers in there and settled. Hey, Nebright checking in for McComb. And this is going to be Blake Wittenmeyer at quarterback as he's in for the first time. And looks like he is going to get enough for a side rail first down. Yeah, I'm a little curious just to see. You know, we, we noticed that earlier it appeared that uh, Woodruff got a little dinged up. I think that's who it was, right? Yeah, Chase Woodruff. Yeah. We, you know, he was holding his, his right hand. I'm just curious that something minor he wanted to go with the two quarterback system tonight get him some experience also and we're gonna have a flag and a false start against McComb so that's gonna back him up to the 49 yeah, and they'll start again at first and 15 excuse me that appeared to be the right slot position out there farthest from us flinched so, a little bit so you saw the linebackers for Allen East kind of move a little bit and might have spooked that right side of the line just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. We'll yeah. With this, some. with this change here, did you notice where they're they're moving, Mr. Aldhauser? Now he's over near us. He's no longer in the backfield. Yeah. He's split wide. Now Whitmire is going to keep it again. Working that right side. Picked up another nice block there as he picks up all of that yardage back and then some out across the 40 to the 39-yard line. Uh, looks like Hensley again in there on the tackle. Dalton Smith in there on as well. I, I think it was Dalton Smith who made first contact. My goodness, six foot two, 220 pounds. He just put his shoulder down and took it the last two plays and got serious positive yards for the Panthers. You know, it's easy to get lost in these numbers, but, you know, 6'2", 220 That's at the high school level move. is no joke. Absolutely. Here's Whitmire again nice on play second there down and five. Smith. And you're absolutely right. Smith in there on the stop. Brogan Paxson also. Nice play by that young man. I know he's had his hands full tonight over the top of the football with DeWeese. Nice play. Whitmire and, and Chase Woodruff, to a certain extent, replacing Grant Dishong, who was the starting quarterback for Macomb last year. Whitmire, uh, 24 of 29 for 410 yards and five touchdowns last season. So he can throw the football if he needs to. Here, well, you here's know. Grubb again. And look at Grubb go. He takes off. Side rail first down and then some as he is pushed out of bounds at the 14-yard line. And I'll tell you what, Grubb, 5'9", 180, and he is a handful. Take a look right here. He just busted through the line of scrimmage. Hensley's going to push him out at the boundary with Wildermuth. I was sort of chuckling before the play because they took Woodruff and put him a tight end. <laughs> <laughs> like, my goodness gracious. There he is on the left side playing t the tight end. Yep. Ball on the 14, fresh set of downs. All towels are back in the backfield now. Coming up on 838 remaining. In the first half, Altizer gets the handoff. Stays up past the 10-yard line to the 9-yard line before he's tackled. Like Hensley on the stop. Paxson, Brogan on the stop. 
So it's like Hensley, Hensley there made first contact, grabbed it around his ankles. Water move. Second down and five. Here is Grubb again. And Grubb only picks up a couple. Nice play there by Carson Klum stepping up from the corner position and grabbing him by the ankles and tripping him up. One of the previews I saw for Macomb this week as the Panthers were getting ready for week one, and um, they all had kind of the same mind. They were ready to go. They were ready to They were ready to hit people. <laughs> they were ready yep. to, to get the season going, and uh, you've really seen that in their line play, uh, and you've seen that just on how they've attacked on offense um, on all phases so far tonight. Third and one, Altauser up the middle, spin move, side rail first down, and they're going to stop him. Around the one-yard line, so it'll be first and goal coming up for McComb. Smith on the first stop. Trying to see who else got off the pile of host of Mustangs there with the stop. About the whole corral. First and goal for McComb. All towels are again. And touchdown, McComb. Panthers get one more on the board. 27-0 now, McComb on top. Went right behind Elijah Grubbs, 5'11", 250-pound junior on that right side and just pounded the football in the end zone. You know, like you said, they're hungry because last year, you know, they're used to success in the playoffs, and they lost to a really good LCC football mm -hmm. team, so... I'm sure this summer, you know, Coach Algie had him in the weight room and seven on sevens. The kick is up and it is good. And McComb in fine form tonight at Goodwin Field. They lead 28-0 over Allen East. Back for more after this on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Open seven days a week on Ogley Street and online at thesiderailrestaurant.com. You know, I keep reading this. I'm going to get hungry. That's, I have that's to make a I'm stop there too. after the game. I don't know. They're in Lee's. I might have to Ooh. make a, a couple a couple of stops. This is not going to hurt. This is not going to help my BMI at all. <laughs> 28 nothing, McComb on top of Allen East. Basically the waistline is what you're trying to get at. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Trying to sound maybe more intelligent than I am. <laughs> My body mass index is going to be negatively impacted by all this food, but it's delicious, and that's why you get it. You betcha. The McComb Panthers have uh, certainly impacted this game, and when you look at it, it's, it's, been, it's been mostly a pound the ball on the ground attack. They've got one touchdown. Through the air, they got on a fourth down conversion, but the rest of the time, it has just been running right at the Allen East defense, and so far the Mustangs have not had an answer. Well, the two turnovers on the interceptions, that's 14 points right there. So, you know, make, making the, the turnover, oh, there's a big run Here's a here. nice return as Schultz with a nice return through the middle there out to the 46-yard line, giving the Mustangs something to cheer about. Here with 6.52 remaining in the first half. Yeah, let's watch the run here. I think Woodruff, you know, saved the touchdown right there with a touchdown save and tackle. Yes, he did. But, yeah, the two turnovers, you know, didn't help the cause for the Mustangs. Mm -hmm. and there's plenty of football left. They've just got to establish something here, get some positive yards, and move, move the chain. Yeah. Spoken like a coach. <laughs> yeah, but mine was round. <laughs> it was an oblong. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up on that, would you, when, right, the, yeah. winter, when the winter rolls around? <laughs> There's been nights where the, the round thing moved like a, a a football, let me tell you. Right, yeah. A lot of falling down on the court. That's, yes. That's, that's kind of strange. Time out here on the field with 6.52 remaining in the second quarter. We'll take a timeout as well. McComb up 28. We'll be back. 
Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken is tonight's scoreboard sponsor with locations in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Thompson going long and complete the pass to Carson Klum out past the 20 yard line for a side rail first down and that's exactly what the doctor ordered for the Allen East Mustangs. Well that's not only for him but for Carson on the outside making the catch but also Thompson's confidence because he threw a nice ball there in between two defenders. Back at it a little bit of no huddle here first down this is Jack Hole looking for some space and Finding a little bit, but not much. Nice, uh, not really a shoestring tackle, but that was Nick Bormuth grabbing him by the ankles and keeping him for a big gain. Yeah. Guess, guess who? Yeah. Hey, guess what? The 6'4", 260 <laughs> senior making the tackle there in the middle for McComb. You know, I'm not familiar with what he does during the winter time, but if he's a wrestler, he'd be a handful, wouldn't he? Good uh, gracious. Yeah. Five wide for Thompson. Screen pass here on second down and long. That's to Hensley, and Hensley out to the 10-yard line. Looks like he is going to have enough for a side rail first down. So Allen East quickly moving the ball down the field here. Nice little pitch and catch with some blocking up front. Nice execution there by the Mustangs. Mr. Meals on the stop. So they're going to be just shy of a first down. So interesting to see what... Joel Billings' play call is here. It's going to be a Thompson keeper on third and short. Thompson has the side rail first down and then gets a little help from his friends getting pushed past the five to the four-yard line. They dropped that left shoulder also. You got to like that. A little help from his friends, like you said. Well, if you're going to be a quarterback and run in this offense, you really can't shy away from contact. No, because they're going to come at you. you got to make sure you <laughs> you get your lick in also. Yeah. So a uh, hole ran into the end zone, but McComb calls timeout before the play can be blown in. So five and a half minutes remaining here in the first half, and we will step away. Be right back. Tonight's first down sponsor is the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Open seven days a week on Ogilvy Street and online at thesiderailrestaurant.com. Allen East threatening. First and goal at the five. Thompson looking for some space, has some hesitation, and gets into the end zone. A flag comes out on the play so for a moment the signal is touched down but we'll see what the uh, penalty is yeah we're gonna see if it's on it looks to be within the tackles that's normally a hold i think they signaled i want to say a legal block in the back we'll see what the official says nice run there by thompson it's too bad it's negated yep mustang's already moving back So they say block in the back. I th think it was Trey Hensley who they got that on. In any case, it's going to be a, instead of a touchdown, it's going to be a penalty. They're going to move it back to the 11-yard line. So well, I was totally wrong because I thought it came between the tackles, and he's a playing on the perimeter. So Thompson again, he's going to go to that left side. A little bit of space, finds enough space and gets in for the touchdown. I'll tell you, that's a gutsy run right there because he was going to try to beat him to the pylon and they were closing in and he cut it back. Great vision right there. Planted that left foot. Nice block there. I think that was Hensley number one. Nice anticipation by Thompson there. And again, you see that all the time. They, they keep running outside. They keep thinking they can beat their man. He makes a nice cut. Cuts inside and puts Allen East on the board for the first time tonight. And the kick is up and good. Ison Schaefer, the senior with the extra point. And Allen East closes the gap a little bit. 28-7, McComb still on top. Welcome back. 28-7, McComb on top of Allen East. But Allen East with a nice... Touchdown drive here, you know, something to get the team going, the confidence going. Uh, Darren Gilbert getting the uh, crowd back into it. There hadn't been a lot to cheer for on this side of the field uh, really since the game started. Well, what's that word, mojo? Yeah. You know, I mean, it really, that was a really, really nice possession there by the Mustangs. And uh, 
Coach Billings has got to be really, really pleased with the execution and the effort of his uh, players right now. I mean, they're not out of this ball game. There's still five minutes to go here in the second uh, quarter. Here is the kickoff, and this one's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. And be, as a result of that, McComb will have uh, pretty much their worst starting field position of the night. But they have had uh, no problem scoring against this Allen East defense. And uh, Coach Algie's charges will try to keep that going here with 519 left in the first half. I'll tell you, Eisen Schaefer got his foot into that one, didn't he? Yes, he did. That's big when you don't allow McComb's best athletes to get that football and running on a kickoff. Nice luxury to have. Would you be surprised to know that he's played soccer? Imagine that. You know, <laughs> you know they had a kicker last year that was really, really good and was an all-conference kicker, so that's a nice thing to see. Oh, there's it a did. fumble. Ball comes back, and Wittenmeyer's just going to fall on top of it, and that's going to be a 15-yard loss. As that is about the uh, first mistake McComb has made tonight on offense. Well, that's a great heady play. I know they lost a ton of yards, but he fell on the football. He didn't try to pick it up because he was getting run down by three or four Mustangs in that possession, Smith and Clum and a couple other teammates. And I, and I know you might be watching that and you think, man, you, you, can't you pick it up and do something Ooh. with it? Like, yeah, you can, but there's also a chance that that's not going to work out very well. Woodruff back under center. Second down and 25. And this is Altizer working that right side, and he has some space, but Schultz making a nice tackle in space. Got a flag on the field, too. So I don't see where it. Jordan Scott. Okay. No, Jordan Scott, I was going to tell you, you know, did a really good oh, yeah, job yeah. shedding his block, but it, I don't think he was in on it. He just got a. Got away from Jordan on that perimeter. Curious just as much as you are and everybody else. So it's a block in the back against McComb, and uh, it looks like that they will, look, they're going to take the penalty, so they're going to pin McComb back to say, if it wasn't so sunny, I'd say the shadow of their own goalpost, but. Yeah, I think he's going to, did he decline? Oh, like, oh, he declined it. Okay. I think he declined it. I would have declined it for, you know, whatever my football knowledge is worth. So third down and 20, he did decline the penalty. An opportunity for Allen East defense to get off the field. And Woodruff with the run and picks up some nice yardage out to the 14-yard line, but that is going to bring up fourth down and fourth and pretty long, and I would imagine this deep in their own territory that they are going to punt it. A nice play by Wildermuth right there, shedding that tackle and making that unassisted solo tackle right there. Nice play by that young man. A little misdirection. Mm -hmm. So McComb punting for the first time. Hensley and Schultz back to receive. It's going to take a little bit of a McComb bounce. Schultz fields it on the bounce at the 45. Makes the guy miss. Out across the 30 to the 20 to the 15. Pushed out of bounds at the 15-yard line. So the Mustangs getting the mojo going, as you mentioned earlier, Darren, and now they're in business. Getting the ball in their athletes' hands now is the Mustangs, and Mr. Schultz busted one free there. Got it down the right sideline, got pushed out of bounds. So officially, they're going to mark him out at the 17-yard line. It looks like. I think that was Wilson. well. That was um, that was McComb previously. So we'll see where they. No, they're going to mark him at the 17-yard line. So great fielding position for the Mustangs. Can they take advantage? First and ten. Thompson on the keeper, rolling out left, and he is stuck Ooh. there Mr. in the backfield. That was number 52 Mr. getting in Deweese. there. Yes, Owen Deweese, six foot, 215-pound senior, and Thompson felt. Uh, about 195 of that 215 right there. Slight loss on the play, second down and 10. Thompson back, looking, looking in zone for Hensley and incomplete. Into double coverage, but Hensley, at least from this angle, looked like he had a pretty good shot at it. Let's see what the replay shows us. You know, as this kid matures and gets older, here, look that off. Here, look at every spot on mm -hmm. the football field. He won't direct it to one area. 
He'll be able to scan the whole field, and that's going to come with maturity and playing time. Third and ten. Thompson back. Pressure coming. Pass is complete. Schultz gets it out to around the 12-yard line and fourth down coming up. So we'll see if they decide to go for it or if uh, Schaefer will get an opportunity to kick a field goal. Mr. DeWeese was bearing down right there on Mr. Thompson. Good job getting rid of the football. Indeed. Timeout, Allen East. So 3.04 remaining. Here in the first half as they uh, discuss what to do here. And, you know, you think, hey, this is an opportunity. Let's get our kicker out there and see what uh, what kind of kicker we've had. We can put three points on the board and, and have that as an option to go throughout the season. It's It, it gives you some options, certainly, if you're uh, head coach Joe Billings. Has he made that decision? Um. As far as I can tell, it looks like they are going to go for it. I don't see Schaefer out there, or someone other than Schaefer is going to kick the field goal. I think they're going to go for it. So Coach Billings thinking, hey, we're this close. We're down 21. Let's see yep, what we can do. Let's take a shot. Yep, let's take a shot. Hold back there with Thompson. Thompson looking to pass, and the pass almost intercepted, intended for Carson Klum. So that'll be a turnover on Downs as McComb will take over. So McComb getting the defensive stop and they will take over uh, about the same area where they punted it here just a few minutes before with 2.59 remaining in this first half and holding on to a 28 to seven lead. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Algie does here as well as Coach Christopher defensively for Allen East on what type of formation they're going to come out in. you got to believe McComb's going to try to keep the thing on the ground and run some time off the clock because I don't think he has any timeouts left. Woodruff with the handoff to Althauser, I believe, over there on that far side. And he's going to pick up about five yards on the carry. Uh, actually, I think that was Grubb. Schultz on the stop for Allen East, along with a host of his teammates. So we'll see how aggressive or conservative Coach Algie chooses to be here with two and a half remaining, and also knowing that McComb will get the football to start the second half. So if you felt so inclined, you could do a two-for-one here, potentially a two-for-one. Ball at the 17, second and five as... The handoff once again going to. Good job by Carson Grubb. Klum, number seven, stepping up. Appeared to be him and number 31. Yep. Jacob Pinks. So that was Grubb with the carry, third down and two. And the Panthers seem like they're content to let as much time run off the clock as they possibly can. So if they can, if Allen East can get a stop here, they would get the football back with all of their timeouts and some clock to play with. Here's Altizer trying to bounce it out. A little bit of a seam opens there in the middle, but I believe he has stopped short of the first down about a yard. So fourth down coming up for McComb. Will remove hole first started by Schultz stepping up, turn it back inside. So, looks like the Panthers are going to punt as they can take this clock down under a minute before they have to snap the ball, and Allen East will get it back with probably 48 seconds and two timeouts. And then as uh, head coach Joe Bullings, you have to decide what you want to do with that. Here's Schultz. Field at the 46 and not going anywhere. Only about a four-yard return as Shoop scoops in there and gets the stop. So Mustangs at midfield with 50 seconds to go. Nice open field tackle by that young man shedding the block of Klum. They 
There's head coach Joel Billings entering his fourth season as the head coach of the Mustangs. Arguably two of the most successful seasons in program history the last two years for the Allen East Mustangs. Well, in 2020 COVID year, five and four. Year before, nine and two. That's pretty nice four-year run here for Coach Billings and his staff. Pass by Thompson, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 coming up. Yeah, I think you're going to see McComb play those secondary players and linebackers back, keeping everything in front of them. Thompson back to throw. A little bit of time, puts that one up. Pass is incomplete. Was looking for Caden Hedrick, number four. Tell you what, a heck of an effort, wasn't it? Got his hands on the football. I think he only got one down, maybe. Not, not entirely sure. From this angle, I thought it looked like a catch, but obviously that requisite foot did not get down in bounds. Nicely thrown ball by Thompson from where he yeah. you know, started the football game, and I'm sure nerves played a huge part in it. He's settling down, playing his game now. Third and 10, Thompson back to pass. Find Schultz there at the 40-yard line, and it'll depend where they mark him, and he's going to be just shy of the first down. Nice job by Schultz rotating back to the football over there on the sideline near McComb. So Alan East takes a timeout. That is their last timeout, I think. Thought they had their uh, – and I have one timeout left. But we'll see. 33 seconds to go, and you know, a little bit of a decision here. You could, you can take a shot at it. Probably McComb is not going to take a shot back if it if it's fourth down and you have the ball at this particular part of the field. Um, but if you're Allen East, do you do you go for it or do you punt it and head I, to the locker I room? I think it depends on if you have that that timeout. If you have that timeout, you know, two yards, you could you know possibly get it on the ground. But if no timeouts left, do you throw the football? Yep. And well, I'm not sure anybody here in the press box knows exactly how many timeouts <laughs> Alan East has left. Scoreboard says two timeouts left. Okay. So we'll we'll go with that for the moment. Thompson looking to throw on fourth down over the middle. And oh, what a play. nice play by Chase Woodruff to knock that one down. Hensley had it, and he was gone. He throws it another yard further. That's a touchdown. Just about as uh, as good a ball as we've seen thrown today, and Hensley was Hensley was in for six. So Chase Woodruff with a touchdown saving uh, swipe there, and it looks like McComb is gonna down it, knee it, and head to halftime with a 28 to seven lead. And that will be the case. So you. Very not very often do you look at a 28 to 7 game and think, man, this one's really competitive. But we've had that certainly the last eight or nine minutes of this one. Do not go anywhere. Uh, this could be a fun finish, even though McComb currently in command with a 21 point lead, 28 to 7 over Allen East. Third quarter action coming up after halftime here on WOSN. We are back here at Goodwin Field, just about ready to wrap up halftime activities. And we have a 28 to seven lead for McComb on Allen East on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Sponsoring the scoreboard tonight, call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here with you as we take a look at some of the stats, Darren. Well, first of all, you know, thank you to McComb for getting these, passing these stats on. For Allen East, three first downs, 12 rushing attempts for 21 yards. Throwing the football 6 of 14 uh, with two interceptions. Total offensive plays 26 for 88 yards. They've returned two punts for 48 and kickoff returns four for a total of 94 yards. Kicked the ball away twice for 31 and a half yards per attempt. Time of possession nine minutes and three seconds. For McComb, eight first downs, 32 rushes for 193 yards. In the air, one for one. 
for a total of 33 plays for 223 yards, two punt return yards for uh, 13, uh, punted the ball twice for an average of 40 in time of possession, 14 minutes and 57 seconds. Thank you very much, Darren. As McComb gets the football to start at the 27-yard line is where they will take over on their next drive. And, yes, you heard that correctly. McComb, one pass play in the first half. It was on a fourth down play. Ended up going for a touchdown. Everything else has been the run game. So a uh, an approach that uh, Woody Hayes would certainly be proud of. From a variety of players, it's just not one that's touched the football. Mm -hmm. It's been in three or four you know, different players' hands for the Panthers. Hunter Nichols on the stop there on that return by the Panthers for the Mustangs. So here we go. This is Braden Shoup getting the carry. Is now we might see a couple of different players get into it. We've called Shoup's name before, but I think this is the first time he's run the football as he gets out close to the 30-yard line. Gang tackled right there by a host of Mustangs. Out to the 34-yard line, so second down and five coming up for Boy, what a, Comb. What a perfect night for football. Yes, absolutely. Doesn't feel like August at all. No, the kids have to love it. Woodruff back, dropping back on second down. Pass is intercepted. Carson Klum rising up and picking that one off. And has some space as he is pushed out of bounds at the 33-yard line. So the Allen East Mustangs trying to keep the momentum going in their favor. First turnover of the day for McComb. What do you want to say? A little jump ball action here, and guess who took it? Number seven, Carson Klum. What an athletic play. Smart to get out of bounds. Hey, I think he plays basketball. Yes, he does. <laughs> 100 miles an hour, too. Yep. So Klum, his first interception of the season, and he is right back out there on offense as Allen East takes over for their first possession of the second half and another opportunity to see if they can get some things going here with 11.07 remaining in the third quarter. Thompson to throw and almost Ooh, gives it right boy. back. Somebody jumped the route. Appeared to be Hayden, Ebright. Yeah, Hayden Ebright almost had interception number three on the night as he, you said it, jumps the route pass intended for Hensley. So here on the next play, and that's Jack Hole. I want to try and get him a little bit more involved in this one as he picks up a couple of yards. Appear to be meals on the stop there for the Panthers. So third down and six coming up for Allen East. Ball on the 32 yard line. Hole back there with Thompson. Dropping back, was looking and gets rid of this one. Just got to throw it out and almost Intercepted by Meals. At least he got his hands on it. So that's going to bring up fourth down. And you know, I, I I think this is go for it territory. I think you could you can you could pin it McComb back if you wanted to. But I think fourth and six. I think you take a shot. And maybe that's what they're going to talk about here. Is Coach Billings calls timeout his first. Yeah, it's one of those where you know you you got the football off a turnover. Let's see if you can't try to cash in with a first down. Allen East has been gaining momentum and having some positive plays. They've been able to string together. This is going back to the uh, really to the last half of the second quarter, and it's really been one of those situations where it's you know it's the first week you're you're trying to make some positive things happen and keep some things going, and it, it's it's really close. Like you've seen a couple times where Allen East has oh just missed that, just missed that. But you got to think if they keep at it here, right? They they can make something happen. Well, and you and you notice a difference in their composure. A lot of those kids have not been varsity football, and I think it was a, a shock to them. And I think they were nervous and they were scared. And the first quarter has been their demise tonight. And they they've really played well, you know, second quarter and and, and even including now. Going forward on fourth and six, and what closing speed there by McComb, Octavian Gonzalez, getting in there for the stop. 
Loss of three and a turnover on downs, and he closed that gap in a hurry. Yeah, there was nowhere to go there. That, Like you said, that young man, Gonzalez, was up with a head of steam, and he met him as he was trying to turn the corner. So McComb stiffens up on defense, and the Panthers make the play to get the football back. So uh, no harm done with the turnover, as the Panthers will take over with 10.08 remaining in the third quarter. Mr. Gonzalez, only a junior. Hand off to Shoop on first down and gets about two yards before he is pushed back, and the flag's going to come out. Maybe a little bit too rough there from the Allen East defensive side of things. We take another look at it. Yeah, that was Hole and Jordan Scott. I think it's the extra push that is what got Allen East in trouble right there. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was that, uh, that little forearm shiver at the end. So it looks like they're going to mark it from last contact. How many seniors do you think McComb has on their team? I didn't look at it that closely, but. Don't cheat. <laughs> Cheater. Seven. Seven, seven, okay. Unbelievable. You're right. I, I, I started like, well, I just, I just glanced at it. I'm like, that's not you that think many. the future's bright? Uh, yeah, oh without my a doubt. Goodness gracious. Without a doubt. Allen East also coming in with not a lot. In fact, they have more uh, more seniors on their team than McComb. If that's the number is seven, I think McComb or um, Allen East has 11 or 12 seniors on their team. So the penalty costly is going to give McComb a side rail first down on the penalty, and they will start on the plus side of the field is on first down. And there's a nice carry really right in the sideline there. Uh, is Colton Smith, number 28, the 5'9 freshman. I'm sorry, that's number 20, rather. That's Altauser. I thought uh, thought yeah, that was Colton Smith coming in there. And like he ran that, away. That freshman. He ran really away good. from Schultz, and Schultz is fast. <laughs> yeah. You know, Hensley got him at the boundary. If he doesn't catch him at the boundary, that's a touchdown. Yeah, 11 seniors for Allen East. Two really young ball clubs. Second down and one, and right up the middle goes McComb, still moving the pile forward out across the 35 down to the 34-yard line. So another side rail first down for the Panthers. As Shoop doing the carrying on this drive. Yeah, going right over that all-league tackle. Bormuth, Deweese. Shoop, a six foot, 170 pound junior. One of the guys sliding into a new role for this Macomb Panther offense. Elijah Gibbs, one of the guard spots. Amador, one of the guard spots. And on first down, Macomb going on that other side. That's Meals. Paxson Wildermuth on the stop for the Mustangs. Also got Logan McGill playing center. I said earlier it was Owen DeWeese, but he's also, you know, he's at the tackle position. Panthers still committed to the run. Second down and six. As this is Grubb, I believe. Pushing the pile forward, and he gets a side rail first down for McComb. Uh, that's Shoop. I'll take that back. Braden Shoop with another nice carry. And this is really what McComb has been able to do. They've been able to win at the line of scrimmage. They've been able to push the piles forward and get those extra yards. And, you know, that one uh, that one penalty there at the beginning that kind of reinvigorated this McComb drive is uh, might, might end up in a touchdown for the Panthers here. Ground and pound, and that's exactly what the game plan has been tonight, other than, like you said, the one completed pass that did go for a touchdown. Here's Shoop again on first down, and he is out past the 15 to the 14-yard line. Just a methodical grind it down the field drive by the Panthers here in the third quarter. Well, I'll tell you what, if I'm a small college or a small mid-major, you got to love this right tackle and this right defensive tackle or the defensive tackle for McComb. Mr. Bormuth, good size, moves exceptionally well, 260 pounds, and they're just running right behind him right now, opening 
huge holes. And then when they're done with that side, then they go over to Deweese at the left tackle. Comb through that pass at the beginning of the second half that was intercepted, and Chris Algy just said, nope, that's it. We're done, we're done well, that's passing. right, one for two, that's yeah, right. Yeah, the one for two. Like that one pass, nope, that's it. We're going to run the ball probably the rest of the game. Paxson on the stop for the Mustangs. Second down and two is going to be good for a side rail first down as I think Shoup came up limping a little bit on that last carry. You think there's going to be some ice bass tomorrow morning at Saturday walkthrough? I think you're right. Ooh, bumps and bruises. I don't want to... <sighs> You know, I don't want to jinx us here, but there's been no cramping yet. No, there hasn't. You know, you'll, you'll, you always look for that the first you know, week of the season. Know, thankfully, the weather's cooperated tonight. Yeah. It's cool. And Here's Althauser on first down. Out across the seven to the six-yard line. Yeah, it's something that's usually a feature of, of the first week, and I know some of the, uh, the games we had uh, earlier this week, there was uh, quite a few cramping issues, but this one – uh, this is not, it's, an, it's a cooler evening. It's in the 60s. It's, it's next really week, a great night for football. Next week's going to be a different story. From what I understand, it's going to get real hot early yes. Monday and Tuesday. That last stop was by number five, Ethan Young, 5'11", junior for Allen East. Coming up on the halfway point of this third quarter, second down and five, ball of the six. Here is Grubb, and he is met there just past the five-yard line. That might have been Hensley who was in there on the stop or at least made first contact. Yeah, it was. Trey Hensley dropping the Hensley, right shoulder. Ethan Young, Wildermuth. Really good job of gang tackling there by the home ball club. Bring up third down and two. My goodness, Jake Venata. Tight end, defensive lineman, junior, 6'3", 200 pounds for McComb. Hand off on third down and all the way to the end zone for a Panther touchdown. Wilson Grubb finishing off the drive, and McComb puts six more on the board. Smith with the tackle, but not until he crossed the plane of the end zone. So the Panthers keep the ball on the ground on this drive and run it right down the field. And an opportunity to go up by four scores. As Chase Woodruff to attempt the extra point. And the kick is up and it is good. 5.38 remaining in the third quarter. It's a 35 to seven lead for McComb. We'll be back. Our first down sponsor is the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Open seven days a week on Ogle Street and online at SideRailRestaurant.com. Well, McCombs drive not derailed because of a turnover on this particular one, and they used uh, Side Rail first down after first down, kept it on the ground, and put it in for seven points. They now lead 35 to seven on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Well, do what you do best, and that's, you know, run behind that big offensive line from tight end all the way to the other side, and they do it very well. And you got a luxury of having three or four different guys that are capable of carrying the football at any time, and I'm sure there's going to be days where they're going to be throwing the football, but tonight, you know, do what you do best, and they're being successful with it. And that's no disrespect to Allen East. It's just uh, the two early bugaboos to sort of put them behind the eight ball. Here's Hensley with the return and has some space. He's out past the 20 to the 30 to the 45 and just about at midfield. So touchdown save and tackle there by Meals. So, you know, some of these returns for Allen East, there's been one guy for McComb that has saved the touchdown. Yeah, that's two that Allen East very easily could have tonight in the kicking game. I'm sure, you know, that's going to be when it comes film time before next week that Coach Algy and his staff is going to review the kickoff coverage and making sure everybody's staying in their proper lanes because, you know what, that's that's a key to the game sometimes, special teams, and if you don't correct those things, it, it could sometimes come back to get you later on in the season. Returns have been a strength. We'll see. 
what the Mustangs can do on this next drive. Thompson looking for some space and gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that is it, McComb in there on the stop. I think uh, I'm going to say that was probably Bormuth in on the stop. Elijah Gibbs, I think, was in there as well. I think well. it was Gibbs. Yep. You know, in defense, you know, to McComb and all the other coaches, again, we talked about it earlier this season, special teams is probably at least of their concerns with the season being shortened as far as practice time before that first game. Thompson back to pass, looking sideline for Klum and – I think, I think that's it. a catch. The ball never hit the ground. That is a catch by Carson Klum. Boy, that's what a concentration to stay with that for a side wheel first down. You betcha. That's a highlighter right there. Great concentration by that young man. Never give up on the football. Yeah, that ball never hit the grounds, and there's no replay, so they're going to keep going with it. Hole in on the carry out to the 27-yard line. Appear to be Venata on the stop. So Alan East has had some of those. Yeah, this is those these, plays. These are the type they've got to convert into points. Second and nine. Thompson rolling left. Is going to take it and run out to the 25 and 24. And that's about it. Guess what? Okay, he got up. He was grabbing. He was grabbing his toes. It looked like we had some cramping going on there, but ah. he bounced up. Here's Thompson again, and this play is going to be blown dead as McComb calls timeout. So some tempo action for Allen East, and McComb says we're going to slow that down just a little bit. 3:53 remaining in the third quarter. That Allen East. Trailing 35 to seven, but they're gonna try and put six on the board. We'll be back. The side rail on Wapakoneta, our first down sponsor tonight, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Open seven days a week at Augley Street and on the side rail restaurant.com. Thompson looking side line and looking end zone and flag coming out at the end of the play. And I think this is probably gonna be pass interference. And we'll give uh, Allen East a side rail first down, but we'll wait for the official word. Appeared to be 11 on 11. And they got the white 11 for pass interference against Schultz. Oh, okay. I was beginning to wonder if they were marking backwards, but they're gonna go forward. Right. All right, so that will be a side rail first down for Allen East. Mustangs had the ball just outside the 15-yard line. Here's the handoff to Hole. And he is pushed back. Looks like he got around to the 12-yard line before he was brought down. Good job up front. Left tackle R.J. Davies. Left guard, Lane Wildermuth. Center, Garrett Bolander. Here's Thompson. Brogan Paxson at right guard. Rolling to the right. Pass and in to the hands and out of Caden Hedrick. And he was all alone out there. Here's another look at it. Two open. Yeah. Right tackle, Landon Poling. The men up front for the Mustangs. So that'll bring up third down and seven. Allen Easton, what I would imagine is four down territory here. Thompson, pressure, back catch is made and diving across the end zone, Hedrick. No signal from the officials that I can see. McComb, of course, saying that they have the football. This and is they're going to talk about this one. They're going to talk about this one. So if the ground calls the fumble, it should be a touchdown. Looks like he, I mean, it looks like he slams the ball in the end zone. It and that's like when it comes out. It looked like he crossed the plane, like you said, and then when he when he extended, the ball hit the ground. That's when it popped out. Yeah, Let's to see me. If it's, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. They're going to say fumble, touchback. So, no touchdown for Alan East. McComb is going to get the football. Let's that take looks, a look at this one again. I, I mean, the officials ruled this one. I look at this and. 
Yeah, that looks like a touchdown to me. That's one that crosses the plane that when he extends with his arms, with both hands on the football, it bounced. But then again, that's why they're down here and we are up here. So the officials say touchback. Kind of stunned silence on the Allen East side of things. Well, I'll tell you what, give credit to Thompson. He hung in there and took a shot from Meals and one of the defensive linemen it appeared to be our buddy. So first down Mr. and Bormuth. in trouble for uh, McComb. I think that was Shoop with the carry, and he doesn't get very much, if anything, on that play. He appeared to be hole on the stop. R.J. Davies in there. So they'll say, looks like he picked up maybe a little bit over a yard there. Well, second down and nine coming up for McComb. So the Panthers with the big stop. Able to keep Allen East out of the end zone. Though I'm sure that will be hotly debated in the Allen East area over the next uh, couple of days. And here's the keeper by Whitmire. And Whitmire off to the races, to the 50, to the 40, tripped up. At the 39-yard line, Hensley with the tackle there. That's incredible. That is a big boy that is running that football, and I'm telling you, he gets up ahead of steam. He can break away from you. Then they slot him down, put him at that tight end position and get him the football. Sometimes, Goodness gracious. Sometimes you just look at a kid and go, Jeez. you're you're too big to be that fast. Oh you goodness. can't be 6'2", 220 and have that kind of speed. <laughs> and a junior. Yeah. Yeah, Hensley saved a touchdown right there, and Hensley is not, you know, slow with his feet by any means. Yeah, Hensley's on the track team. Here's Wittenmeyer again, fresh set of down, side rail first down for uh, McComb on that last play, and he has dropped <laughs> at the 36-yard line. You're right. He is on the track team because I watched him run that relay. And yeah. Those boys could scoot. Congratulations to them on bringing home that, you know, that gold trophy for winning that state championship. That was an unbelievable relay they had. Coming up on 95 seconds remaining. In this third quarter, 35 to seven. McComb ahead of Allen East, looking for more. Here's Wittenmeyer going left side, lower in the shoulder, putting the helmet in and getting out to the 17 yard line. I'm sorry, the 27 yard line. That's gonna be good for a side rail first down for the Panthers. That's a heck of a gutsy tackle right there, you know it? Carson Clum coming up there from the corner spot, chopping his legs out from underneath him. Clum, 5'9", 140 pounds, taking on Blake Wittenmeyer, 6'2", yeah, 220. If he gets him at the waistline, you know he's going to win that battle. Yeah. Nice play by that senior corner. He's had a big night, big reception, big interception. Said he's had a nice catch. He had an interception, as you mentioned. Numerous tackles. Wittenmeyer. Pushing the pile forward out to the 24-yard line. I'm curious to see, and I don't think this is going to happen tonight based on the score and how everything's turning out, but I, I was kind of looking forward to seeing Whitmire putting the ball up. I kind of wanted to see, you know, what uh, what his passing game looked like, having, you know, really nice numbers last year in, in limited action. I was kind of curious to see what he looked like. Well, I'll tell you what. That's one of the pieces in the, in the conversation you can have if the score stays like it is with Coach Algy <laughs> afterwards. I dare you to ask him that question. <laughs> Or say, you'll uh, probably, probably be a sucker about it. Say, yeah, you know, Gil wanted me to ask you. <laughs> uh -huh. I you know, know how I was, that works. You know, I was born on a Saturday, Gil, but it wasn't <laughs> last Saturday. I'm not asking Algie that question. Oh, no, I've known Chris for, oh, my goodness, 35 years, 40 years. Yeah. He's he's a quality guy. Final. Coach, Coach Billings I'm not, you know, familiar with, but, you know, everything that I've heard about him. Three quarters in the books, and McComb, on their way, possibly, to win number one on the season. Fourth quarter coming up. McComb on top, 35-7 to here on WOSN. Welcome back. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's, our scoreboard sponsor this evening. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. 
Fourth quarter happening here at Goodwin Field. McComb with a 35-7 lead over the home team, Allen East Mustangs, and the Panthers with the football. Braden Shoup with the carry out to the 15-yard line. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here with you, and um, McComb has put together a pretty solid effort on the ground tonight. Uh, they had over 220, 223 yards rushing in the first half. They've done nothing but add on to that. And, you know, McComb had a number of questions at different skill positions, and it looks like so far, you know, they've got some pretty good answers to those. Well, I think both teams, you know, is going to answer some questions that they have when they break down this film. You know, it's just, you know, McComb come out of the shoot early and got them quick points and got some stops defensively. And But Allen East is battling and, and battling and battling. Ethan Young in on a stop. What I really like to see was he had that open field tackle right there. Great sportsmanship, helped the kid up. And that's what high school sports is all about. You know, it's not all about W's and L's, but playing the game the right way. And that was great to see in this last stop. Appear to be Jordan Scott coming in for the Mustangs, cleaning up the play. You mentioned the quick start that McComb had. They had uh, two interceptions early on. And they converted that into 14 points. And here's seven more. Altizer coming in from the left side and putting six more on the board as this has stretched out to a 41-7 to McComb lead. Yeah, on the replay, you can see Carson Klum had a shot and missed him. What a great cutback, though, by that young man. Pound, the, pound pay dirt. So Altizer with another touchdown and an extra point away from making this one 42-7. to And... We'll have a running clock in effect here at Goodwin Field. Woodruff, who has done some of the quarterbacking duties. The kick is up, and it is good. 10-21 left in the game. 42-7, McComb on top of Allen East here on WOSN. Back here at Goodwin Field, 42-7, McComb on their way to win number one on the season as they have put together an outstanding uh, performance on the ground. They've had a number of contributors, Wilson Grubb, Braden Shoup, Chase Woodruff, Blake Wittenmeyer, and, of course, Braxton Althauser. And they have uh, put together, as we said, quite the rushing clinic against Allen East tonight. But these are the type of games you want to open up with, you know? I mean, both teams very successful, and Allen East is going to bounce back from this from this. Uh, game tonight return out to the 37 yard line and um, I, I am not saying this to take anything away from anyone else in the Northwest Conference this season but you look at Allen East schedule and this could be one of the most talented teams that they play the entire season I, I totally agree with you and, and I know you know McCombs focus is going to be in a, no disrespect to the other teams within the conference but week 10 is that Liberty Benton game and that's a stone's throw away from, from both schools. So, you know, that's a nice advantage, you know, for Liberty Benton and McComb having, a, having that week 10 to prepare for it. But you got to take it one game at a time and continue to practice every day and clean up your mistakes. Panthers, no doubt, having their sights set on a third straight BVC championship is this play is blown dead, as I will imagine we're going to have a false start against Allen East. At least that's my guess as a yeah, come from guy who talks to the mic for a living. It? Yeah, so it's going to be. Yep, full start against the Mustangs. So that'll back him up five yards. So. First down and 15 for the Mustangs. Hand off to Hole and Jack a, Hole finding about a yard. and Not you know a that, whole lot there, huh? No. Couldn't tell if that was a punt from you or not. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally. How's that sound? Okay, yeah, yeah. There. <laughs> DeWeese on the stop. Bournemouth on the stop. Grub on the stop. And Jack Hole has not uh, has not had a lot of space to run tonight. That 
Macomb line has been really good. Here's Thompson across the middle on second down, looking for Hedrick, and pass is incomplete, third down. And again, as he gets his reps, he's going to get his, his arms going to get stronger. He's going to check his men off. And he's going to he's going to learn to to spin it a little bit harder. Yep. That comes with confidence and repetition. Here's Thompson going over the middle again and looking for Hedrick, had him open, just overthrew him again and you know those are the things that just as you mentioned that as he as he gets better, as he matures, as he gets more into the offense, those passes are going to start connecting, and they're going to hit. They're going to hit those for big games. Did, did he complete it? No. No. Did he put it in a position where his man could catch it? I say yes because he's thrown it away from the defender, where the defender cannot, you know, even get a hand on it. Right. That's timing. That's going to come. Mm -hmm. So fourth down, Allen East. Will punt this one away, fielded at the 29 by McComb. Nice and coverage there. I think that was. By the blue and white. Indeed. I think that was Carter. No, that was uh, Woodruff who fielded that. Nichols on the stop along with Jacob Pinks. So McComb will come back out on the field, and they've used something of a dual quarterback attack tonight. We haven't talked much about that, but. Um, Chris Algy signaled that, I don't think he said outright that he was going to uh, use two quarterbacks this season or even for this game, but he did mention that Blake Wittenmeyer and Chase Woodruff uh, would see a little bit of time, and that's exactly what we've seen tonight. Uh, Woodruff, I think, has taken uh, a fair number of the snaps, but Wittenmeyer has been out here quite a bit in this uh, last half of the game, and Wittenmeyer uh, returns under center as he takes the run out to the 41-yard line, and Wildermuth on the stop along with Jordan Scott. Jordan Scott's been very active tonight for the Mustangs defensively. Wildermuth also. You know, one thing we haven't mentioned, and I'm just jotting this down here, you're gonna, you're not gonna believe it, but when we go through here and we look at the size of what McComb brings across that front line, Second down and five. And Wittenmeyer with the keeper once again. And this time, Allen East swallows him up. A gain of maybe one or two. It's going to make a third down and four coming up for McComb. Hold on the stop. Center, Logan McGill, 245. Maddox Amador, 255. Elijah Gibbs, 250. Nick Bormuth, 260. Owen DeWeese. 215, Jake Venata, tight end, 200. Blake Whitmire, quarterback, tight end, 220. Pretty good size. Yeah. You know, it's easy to forget with all the skill positions out there that this is still a game of, you know, pushing the other guy around. Yep. It all Here, starts up that. front. Ball, it comes out, but the play blown dead is Blake Meyer is, or I'm sorry, Woodruff has stopped at the, 42-yard line. That's why seven-on-sevens are very deceptive. Right. You know, because you don't have your five guys out there in front of you, and if you have a tight end, your six guys protecting that quarterback. I don't have a 250-pound guy Ooh, chasing me down. Goodness. It's a little bit of a different environment. <laughs> Owen Deweese, 215. Is in, he's the smallest guy on the offensive line. Incredible. So fourth down, I believe this is only the second punt tonight for McComb, second or third at most. And we're going to have a timeout by McComb. So they'll take their second timeout, and that will stop our running clock with 4.32 remaining. And, yes, that will be a timeout. So McComb on their way to 1-0. They lead 42-7 here in the fourth. Scoreboard tonight, sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. That punt was in a phone booth. It went out of bounds around the, 
Uh, I thought it was the 50-yard line. If that had gone any higher, it could have been confused for a weather balloon, but it's going to be down at the 49-yard line. That's a special teams thing that's very correctable. It's not, it's not good to see from a coach's standpoint, especially if you're one of the special teams coaches. Right, right. But very correctable. So Allen East will start on the plus side of the field, 422, and counting rem uh, remaining in this one. Here's the handoff to Hole, out to the 46-yard line. So uh, the running clock in effect as we take a look at this run by Jack Hole. Now, if Allen East scores, that'll drop the lead to under 30 points, so the running clock would come to an end, and it would just resume regular activity. You know, right there, Jack Hole puts his head down, runs over defender from McComb, and then bends right down and picks the young man up. Yep. Here's Hole again, now to the 41-yard line. A uh, nice pickup of about three there. It's going to make a third down and one coming up for Allen East. Jake Venato on the stop. You know, that young man had a great year last year. What did we say, over 1,100 yards mm -hmm. running the football? Yep. He's going to get his opportunities. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, Allen East looks like the, the same offense. You know, four wide. Thompson going long and almost connecting with Schultz. And again, same thing we've seen. Watch this replay. He checked off where he was going. Did you notice he went right side and looked and then dropped and pumped it and threw it yep. to the left side? That is one of the few times that I've personally seen him do that tonight. But that's a great job by that young man. That's how far he's came since the first quarter. And he had him. Schultz had separation. And we're going to have yes. a flag on this one. Yes. And again, timing. That's going to come. Yep. That was right off of Schultz's fingertips for a touchdown. So you, uh, you you clean those things up, you get that experience down, and, um, you know, it, it's it's not out of the question to see Allen East, man, right back in the thick of things this year. Absolutely. You'd be amazed how much film study, what it does to a team. Mm -hmm. So fourth down and Thompson. Nice punt. Kicks this one and fair catch made at the 10-yard line. So McComb will get the football back with 2.20 remaining. So McComb leaves here, and they their next three games, Crestview should be a fun matchup against the Knights, and then Van Lu and their BVC opener, and Van Buren. I think I saw something where McComb has won 30-some straight games against Van Lu, I think, something like that. Yeah, I, I went through it today. It was amazing. They had a current streak. It was broken. Yeah, uh, of of winning streaks back that was broken to 2017. But yeah, yeah, it was it was 30 or 36 games is what I'm thinking, partner. Yeah, Allen East they move on and they will take on Arlington next week and then Indian Lake and then Lipsick. Here is McComb on the carry, Braden Heller. The 5'8 sophomore is Coach Algie getting some some more younger guys in. You think, you know, all you have are younger guys. You can't. <laughs> yes, <laughs> There's no not, a lot of, not a lot of seniors to sub no in. No kidding. But getting some uh, more experienced more experience for some of the younger, younger, younger guys. Landon polling on the stop. Yeah, my memory serves me correctly. I think Arlington opened up with Hard Northern tonight. I think you're right. Coming up on 120 remaining in this one. And the handoff there going left side out to the 19-yard line. Well, plenty of action coming up on WOSN this weekend. We'll have Salina Versailles for you over on WOSN. Crestview Parkway, uh, looking forward to that matchup. And volleyball action for you as well, the Coldwater Spike Off as the volleyball season gets underway here on WOSN and WTLW as we are with you, bringing you 
more games than anyone else in the area here at WOSN and WTLW. Last stop there by Ethan Young, the junior. And looks like that we're going to have probably one more running play from McComb. And it's just going to be a kneel down. And that is going to be it, McComb, with a great performance here tonight against Allen East. 42 to 7, McComb gets the win. Allen East, plenty to work with. I think the Mustangs are going to be okay. As this fourth quarter wraps up, and we'll come right back and bring you the Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. 42 to 7, our final McComb over Allen East here on WOSN. Wrapping up activities here at Goodwin Field. McComb with a 42-7 win over Allen East. Our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight brought to you by Stolly Insurance. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. Hey, Darren, who do you like for the Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight? Well, I'll tell you what. If you go through and look at the stat sheets that McComb offered us tonight, thank you to them. You know, just in the rushing category, Aldhauser, 122 yards. Whitmire, 11 carries, 74 yards. Grubb, 6 carries, 62 yards. Shoop, 8 carries, and 40 yards. You know, look, looking at these stats here, I think you got to go with the all-leaguer in Aldhauser, Braxton Aldhauser, the 5-foot, 9-inch senior. 19 carries for 122 yards, two touchdowns. Long gain of 29 yards, averaging 6.4 yards a carry. So, Braxton... Well-deserved honor tonight for that young man. Congratulations. A potent running attack by the Macomb Panthers tonight, led by Braxton Althauser, gives the Panthers a 42-7 win on the opening weekend of the high school football season. That is going to wrap it up for us tonight here from Goodwin Field. And Allen East, Macomb getting the win tonight, 42-7 over the Allen East Mustangs. For Darren Gilbert and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone, from Herod.